What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller. Welcome to another installment of Microbrand Monday. Today, we are looking at an MMI turret diver now. For my longtime viewers, you would know, about a year ago, a year two ago, I don't know, the, the, my bearing of years is destroyed. And I'm the time teller, so if I can't figure out how much time has elapsed, you guys are f***ing. But within the last two years, we reviewed an MMI turret diver, but this one today is MMI's latest iteration of this watch. It's got a chronograph complication. So let's take a look. Now, for those of you who love watches but don't take anything that seriously, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon because, guys, let's face it, we are the laughing stock sociopaths of the watch world and we would love to see you join us. And while you're at it, go ahead, find the like button and order a pizza, but make sure that it's a cauliflower pizza. It is 2.38 p.m. Let's get down to business. Coming in at 321 US dollars, we have a 40 millimeter case, 47 millimeter lug to lug, and 14.5 millimeters thick with a 22 millimeter lug width. So again, if you don't want the bracelet, uh, you're gonna have to find something 22 millimeters, a thick boy here. You're getting a double domed sapphire crystal, of course the case and bracelet, 316L stainless steel, but they made a point to specify this is surgical grade. You're getting an ion plated stainless steel bezel insert, uh, Seiko VK67A mecha quartz movement. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. And a 100 meter water resistance rating with a threaded crown. Now typically as a watch reviewer, and I'm sure you might kind of resonate with this as a watch enthusiast, when we hear mecha quartz, we kind of roll our eyes because every mecha quartz watch that I've reviewed, um, I don't want to say every, but a lot of them that I've reviewed have the same type of kind of flimsy feel, uh, kind of boring, um, you just, not really functional, it's just a complication for complication's sake. I just, I don't enjoy the Mecha Quartz micro brands as much as I do other movements, except, you know, the NH35, because 2022 is the year that I destroy the NH35 movement. Just give everything Salitas and we'll be happy, okay? Or premium Miotas. You know, here, here's the thing. All right, people are gonna call me a snob because I prefer Salida over everything else, but the truth is, I actually like the 9000 series Miotas. I think they're the 9000s, right? The premium series of Miota movements. I think that it's awesome to have a nice high beat sweep. Yeah, hacking hand wind, kind of icing on the cake, workhorse movement, fairly affordable when you're going with the Miotas, but even if you wanna bump it up, hey, bump up the price a little bit. Give me a Swiss made Salida. Again, you're getting that 28,800 BPH sweep. You're getting hacking hand wind, a date complication, beautiful watch, easy to modify if you wanna give it a different module. I mean, Chris Ward uh, has been doing that a lot with their various watches. They've been adding modules to them. Oh my God, the jump hour, the moon phase, just, the possibilities are endless here, but no more NH35. And you know what, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna say it. No more VK Mecha Quartz. <sighs> okay, so with all that being said, uh, when we hear Mecha Quartz, we think this might just be another chronograph with a battery, but that doesn't seem to be the case with this MMI turret. This looks and actually feels like a very functional nautical chronograph. Now there's some definite similarities between this iteration and the original MMI turret diver. And guys, again, watch that review. I'll leave a link in the description and I'll leave a link up here that you can click on at the top of the screen. Uh, but the truth is I really, really enjoyed the initial uh, automatic MMI turret diver. So I was very excited to hear of this chronograph. But let's go ahead, jump into the pros and cons and we can break this down a little further. So the first pro would be the great dimensions of the watch, right? 40 millimeters, wears on the wrist very, very nicely. Um, everything is super duper sharp. The lugs uh, meet the bracelet perfectly without being integrated, because let's be honest, integrated bracelets are kind of boring. It's not oversized, but it's not so small that the chronograph complication is like unusable. The bezel absolutely gets my seal of approval for T3 pizza roll timing. It has really nice serrations, very positive clicks. Uh, it's not gonna back out on you. It's something that you really enjoy using. 
The pushers have a really nice positive click when you go to actuate the chronograph complication. And guys, just like the original MMI turret diver, uh, that date complication. So interesting, not something you see every day, uh, very tastefully done. I know some people might think it's kind of a very busy way of displaying date, but I really appreciate it because I love date complications and I like seeing something different. But with the good comes the bad. Now the first con, I don't really know if this is a con actually, uh, but the initial impression I got from this watch's design is that it kind of resembles the Tudor Tiger. And again, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. That's a fine watch. That was back when Tudor actually made watches other than the Black Bay. The next con is much worse in my opinion, the Loom is terrible. Now this is a prototype, but still it's just, it's not great. Now MMI actually sent me a message very recently, like last night before we came in here to film, and they let me know that the blue dial version uh, will have a loom on the outer rim. So the chapter ring uh, will be loomed on the blue dial variant of this watch when it gets into production. But still, I kind of have to bring up the fact that the loom that was applied to this prototype which is kind of dim. The next con, the bracelet feels okay. Doesn't feel totally cheap, but the clasp I did not like. Thankfully, there are quick release spring bars, so you can go ahead and swap this out for something, you know, better. The next con is that this watch is 14.5 millimeters thick, but it's kind of a basic quartz movement. I know it's a mecha quartz chronograph, but that's not some big high torque 7C46. Uh, this is still kind of a simple movement and it doesn't need to be, uh, you know, that thick of a boy, but it is a thick boy with two C's. And I know, because from one thick boy to another thick boy, God, I'm, I'm so jacked. And the final con would be that the Crown's pushers, uh, you know, some dive chronographs have pushers that you can actually thread, uh, those are decoration only. So they put these kind of threaded uh, Crown pushers on the pushers and it got me really excited and then I tried to use them and I realized they just wouldn't budge. They're, they're just there for decoration. Kind of a bummer. But I understand if they were to add them and make them totally functional, it would make the watch more expensive. I understand that. So here's my conclusion. In a sea of cookie cutter micro brand divers, and believe me, we've seen a lot of them on this channel, it is refreshing to hear that MMI is kind of sprucing up a dive watch that I already thought was really intriguing and unique. You know, that date complication is just really cool and their initial diver was super duper solid. I really liked it. I thought it kind of stood out from the crowd. And uh, yeah, so I really enjoy seeing them produce something now with the chronograph complication. And listen, it's not perfect. Uh, we reviewed a prototype today, but I can only make the pros and cons based upon the watch I have in front of me. Uh, but for $320 and some change, um, I think it is a really fun diver and something that won't break the bank. But let me know what you think. Please leave a comment in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. Let me know what you think about this MMI turret chronograph. And again, I'll leave a link to the original MMI turret diver uh, in the description below. So guys, if you enjoyed this micro brand Monday, then uh, hey, we do it every week and there's a ton of micro brand Mondays to choose from. So if you want to go back in the playlists, uh, yeah, you can watch some micro brand Monday episodes. And please, before we go, go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy watches and you just refuse to take anything that seriously in life. Because I have a feeling if you're here, we're both crazy. And then while you're at it, find the like button, order it a pizza. You know, it's a gesture, a very kind gesture, very generous of you. But make sure it's a cauliflower pizza disgusting. All right, guys, I will catch you on the next one. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to T3 Time to Drive. Check out my personal website, thetimetellershop.com, the number one place to find affordable vintage luxury watches handpicked by me and a bunch of really cool don't start watch collecting merch. Uh, support the channel and I will see you on the next one. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah.